I remember a hot summer's day, watching my friend walk up politely to his NES and karate chop it when he was playing Battletoads, the turbo motorbike level. Because when you look at games, there are a couple where difficulty at some point is almost indescribable. And whenever we talk and we do top 10 or top five lists, these damn games are always in the conversation. I can only assume that the playtesters for that turbo tunnel level were spiders with the reaction so quick that Spider-Man pretended that they had ESP. Battletoads is back though, as a couch co-op three person battler with some platforming elements from Rare. The game comes out this week on Game Pass, on the Windows Store and on Steam. If you get it on Game Pass, it'll be there. Otherwise it's 1999. But the question remains, does Battletoads remind us of the typical tomfoolery Toads are always known for and take us back to a time when they were ripe and picked as competitions for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Or does it remind us that for every Transformers, there's a GoBots and for every G.I. Joe, there's a friggin' Captain Planet out there. Let's get to it. If you like the video, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Battletoads. Graphics are up first. The argument can certainly be made that animation-wise, Battletoads is a very unique beast. It's not as slick as many other games of its genre and in this kind and that have been released recently, but it also has a very cool look in and of itself. It reminds me a bit of Three Dirty Dwarves, which was an excellent game on the Sega Saturn. That angular look that the Toads have and the morphing that happens with attacks, both power attacks as well as their combos, I really started to enjoy as I continued to play the game, like transforming into a frog train and headbutting enemies, which is a sentence I never thought I'd actually say out loud. My favorite though has to be Zitz. This dude is a monster. His head is something that other people probably travel to in rocket ships. And it gives them each a unique look in a game that most importantly helps break them up from the constant bat shit chaos that erupts on screen. The moment the game just decides to Star Trek teleport a group of bad guys into a location without any warning. It's not gonna be for everyone, but I dug the look of the enemies and the boss work and just the overall design. As I continued to play through it, it also reminded me of Commander Zim, forcibly. Also, you get to be more than just the main three toads throughout the game, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to find. Sadly, it also has a film grain filter that cannot be turned off, and that removes a bit of the cleanliness that the art and the color style have, and it's more distracting than it really needs to be. When you're transforming into an arcade machine to smash a bunch of dudes who are shooting you with what looks like electrified ice cream and cotton candy, you don't really want to see it through a digital blizzard, but it is sadly ever present, and I could find no noticeable option to turn it off. Also, while some of the levels are excellent in their creativity, a couple others felt like they were just sort of there. There wasn't a lot present going on, and while you do have some interactions with the background and various different things you can do, there wasn't a lot. That brings us to performance, though. Anything remotely current is going to run Battletoads at a game speed that you will probably not be accustomed to. It's not going to push your system. And while there are a couple options, mostly restricted to windows and full screen and borderless, other than resolution, most everything is locked into the game itself. Anything with a 970 or better isn't going to have any problems running this. We are talking well over 144 frames per second with anything that's even remotely current. And it doesn't really seem to even require that much in terms of the PC and the CPU itself when you get all of this chaos going on at screen, it keeps a playable frame rate, which sadly enough, we have seen some other games not be able to hit. I get it that the look and the artistic style of Battletoads might not be for everyone, but I grew accustomed to it and actually grew to really enjoy that angular look and the way everything was just hyper exploded out whenever you performed a special move. I ended up really liking it. And that brings us to sound, music, and voice. Suck my freaking butt, you backstabbing punks! Chug my dump truck, you stinky wimps! Okay, how do you want to spend the next three million miles? We could play I Spy. Ooh, me first! I Spy! Another spaceship heading right for us. Let's do voice first. So the voice work itself is fine. I love the voice acting for the Dark Queen, by the way. She has this lofty, airy way in which she speaks, and that's offset by them bleeping her out all the time when she's yelling at someone. That is awesome, and actually there were some times where I was laughing out loud. Content-wise, the game can feel ancient, and that really doesn't help it get more fans. The moment it slows down, it starts to sort of fall apart. So I'd say voice-wise, performances were fine. Sometimes the game is really enjoyable and very funny. At other times, it just so loftily misses the mark and almost feels like it's on purpose, and somehow it's the straight man, and you're supposed to do something funny. But that never really happens. And that brings me to music. 
So between the heavy guitar battle tracks to the more tepid and dare I actually say classical sounding tracks during some of the platforming moments and the creepier synth vibes that you have during downtimes in the levels, there is a lot going on here, especially when you're a spaceport weekend farm festival that looks like a bunch of aliens just got together to buy random fruits that you can't identify. The tracks are diverse to say the least. While it's a bit all over the place when it comes to how the sound works, the game splits up the levels and sections and levels of levels and sections of sections and sections of levels usually fine, so it never really feels ramshackle. You do notice then after some of the fights though, the fade out to the exploratory music seems almost clumsy in how the fade out works, but that's a small thing. But speaking of no small thing, let's talk about sound because it's hyper important and it's not bad here. Sometimes these kind of games, especially with so much happening on screen, they're really susceptible to that high end crunch where too many sound samples crowd into the same spot. But even with everyone playing and being fired at by dudes with laser beams taped to their heads and cyber cops getting frog karate kicked into the sky, it never had any issues. Same with the other scenes for platforming and the shoot 'em ups not bad at all. And the small informative sounds like the boxing bell being rung when you take out the last guy or the perfectly placed grunt of a toad getting knocked down can help, especially when the level is flooded with enough color it could probably press its own LSD tabs. Not bad. But if the gameplay is bad, it's not gonna matter and that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. So Battletoads, they've spent their entire last couple decades locked up in a shelter. They come out of the shelter, they find out that the world has changed around them and the fame they've always sought isn't within reach. So like any influencer with over like 200 people, they start making their own drama and find out that the Topian Empire is taking over everything and they have to team up with former enemies and go out and wreak havoc. On the surface, the gameplay of Battletoads hasn't made a great deal of changes from the original game. It's still an attempt of tongue-in-cheek humor wrapped into a 2D brawler with the occasional mini games. Here too is the turbo bike section that just wreaked utter havoc on controllers from the original version as well as a series of mini games and those platforming sections I mentioned before. But the core of the game is the battle and that's good because that's when Battletoads is at its best outfitted with light and heavy attacks as well as the ability to spit chewing gum on enemies to freeze them or use their tongue to pull the enemy up into the actual air or move themselves around the game world. Even better, all of this can be comboed together. When that's working, it's excellent. Unfortunately, the first couple levels, I'd call it drab, but I just don't think that's a good enough word. Pretty goddamn boring would probably be the better word. The first couple levels just aren't that great of fun. Even when you're picking up on the tutorials, those enemies just aren't that enjoyable. And the turbo bike, that level is nothing more than just a long series of really boring jumps and slides to not slam into a wall. Once you get into the game proper though, there's more than meets the eye. For instance, many enemies have the ability to not only shoot projectiles, but do things like electrify the area around them. But if they do it near water, it electrifies all the water, but the water isn't always just in a square spot. Sometimes it's in a different shaped tunnel. So you have to really watch out where you're stepping in the battlefield. The battle toads themselves have two light classes with fast attacks and combos, and then the one huge toad that smashes the ever living shit out of pretty much everything on the game screen. They have a nice stable of moves and the combos feel good. For instance, a quick dash makes them invulnerable as they do it. So combos could be dashing between enemies, delivering super fast combos between them, then leaping into the air, lashing out to pull an enemy into the air with you're smashing them with two sets of combos and then doing it a couple more times before it finally actually coming back to the ground to pull off a move that happens when you trade out playable characters. 60 plus hit combos can be the absolute norm. And of course, there's a rating system. Now, depending on the difficulty, the enemies do more damage and take more. So you can find your own level of competency within the gameplay. And of course, how many people you play with. Battletoads, it's not the deepest game out there. You're not buying skills or anything like that. You're just learning how to take on more and more unique mobs as ones are introduced. This is also interspersed with hacking attempts on doors or platforming sections here and there. Because as we all know, Toads are computer experts. Enemy diversity is actually a strong point, I feel, or at least the mobs here throughout the game. It's not really a super long game, but the enemies usually warp in in that age old fashion of beat em ups and it's their makeup that was so fun. The game never hesitated from throwing some crazy combination of armored cops, flannel lumberjack aliens and axe throwing wild men at me and then changing it up the very next moment. That was very cool. I was disappointed with some things here. There's no online co-op. It doesn't have anything like that. It does have Steam remote play together or you could use Parsec, which is Awesome in its own right, but that's a bit like casting a spell in front of a dog. It's sort of a wasted opportunity. I'm not quite sure why that doesn't exist just de facto in this title. It does have some issues, warts and all, but in the end, I did like what I played, despite a bit of a stumble there at the start. And speaking of a stumble at the start, did that affect everything? 
Well, that brings us to fun factor. Battletoads gets off to a bit of a rough start for me. May not for you, but it did for me. And I found that as I continued to play, it got more and more enjoyable. The actual story here is something that, while not throwaway, was actually something I wanted to listen to and understand what was exactly going on. I do like the characters, and they had a little bit of a different attitude for each one of them. When it comes down to it, the game is fun, the combo system is enjoyable, and trying to get a better rank with different combos is always going to be something that a lot of people want to jump into. You've got your three difficulties, so you can certainly do that. But this is very much a game that harkens back to Xbox Arcade. Whether that is defined by its price or its length is up to you but I think both of those sort of prove this. And as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC. This should almost just be called Game Pass or Pass because I have a feeling a lot of people are probably looking at it like this. It's on Game Pass. You should certainly check it out. It's 19 bucks. It does not have online multiplayer. You have to use Parsec or you would have to use the Steam remote. So you can't do the Windows version because they don't have that. You would have to use Parsec with the Windows version. I think that there's enough issues here. You might want to look at that. N listen, $19.99, that's not bad at all. It's a, it's a good price, especially for the amount of hours. I just personally felt that that first maybe hour of it was really not that fun or enjoyable. Those levels just did not come together. And it felt sort of like they were just trotting along on the Battletoads name. And then all of a sudden, it got really enjoyable after that and continued to stay that way. Hopefully, people who experience this won't have the same issue. So like I said, Game Pass, get it. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Check out Reddit and Facebook and Twitter. You can always become a patron. As you guys know, even if the devs give me a code, Microsoft gave me one for this, I always go out and I get a copy of the game so my hard-earned cash is on the line just like yours and I give it away to somebody who watches the video. So comment in the comments section and this Friday we'll be giving that away during the podcast. Check out the merch if you get a chance, ACG on Teespring, or become a patron. I would love to have you. Peace out, and enjoy the rest of your week.